Okay guys, so I just did like a 12 minute video and I ran out of memory. And I'm like, gosh! So then I had to go and like it won't even play. Like it won't, the video is completely available. So you gotta do everything all over again, delete a bunch of videos. So I'm gonna go through this very quickly. So stay with me, please. This AIM Pro, please avoid this if you're looking at a sprayer. It's given us, at least in our farm, nothing but trouble. As you'll see, those little yellows, those are your AIM solenoids out on, out on your product boom and they always burn out. If they don't burn out, then they plug, and then they'll either stick open or they'll stick on, one or the other. So I'll show you how to go and look at the little uh, coils inside to see the little springs. I can't think of the technical word for them. Yes, I'm running a lot of pressure. Yes, you want the blue bar about to here, and you don't want to have any uh, valves not found. But this has given us a lot of trouble, um, and I'll tell you a little bit right now. You can be spraying a 320 acre load, everything's awesome, you can burn off three loads, you pick up first thing Monday morning and then all of a sudden you, uh, you, finish, you finish your 320 acre load, at least you think you do, everything paints green, you finish your field, this thing counts down to zero, 320 on there, you go home, you're all happy and proud and you just want to get a coffee and uh, you just realize you brought back 600 freaking gallons with you. And you're like, what? You're like, what? Exactly. So you're like, okay, well that was weird, so let's just try that again. You go out there, now you're watching this like a hawk. 500, reference it, 500 on the tank. 400, reference it, 400 on the tank. Everything's fine. Weird. Okay, and then the next time you're going to go out on a Tuesday morning, you're going to go out there, you're doing your 320 acres, everything's counting down, everything's looking good, everything's good, you're, you're not paying attention anymore because you have trust in your sprayer, and all of a sudden you just burn off your load in about 80 acres. You're like, what the crap? How is that possible? You're like, what is going on around this operation? So now you're really watching this thing like a hawk. So now you're like, okay, 500, 500, 400, 400, 300, 300, 200, 200. You guys get the idea. And then now it's finally consistent. <coughs> it happened twice. So now you're just adjusting your rate. You're like, okay, I can outsmart you right now. I'll just adjust my rate by about 22.3%. And then boom. And then, yeah, that works. That'll work for maybe about seven loads. And then all of a sudden it will go backwards. It will flip itself backwards again. It's just all over. It's completely sporadic. You can't plan for it. It's so freaking annoying. This has happened on three of our 4440s, you guys. It's so annoying. We have changed the um, the uh, uh, the flow the flow meter. We have changed the flow meter. We have put new monitors on here. We have checked wiring harnesses. You name it. All of our filters are cleaned. Yes, it is so frustrating that happens and there's absolutely no rhyme or reason to it whatsoever you can't plan for it just when you do it will go back the other way at least if it was stuck one way you could you could figure that out but nope so anyway we got a 120 foot boom on this thing we got the viper 4 obviously in here and this is an awesome monitor i'll quickly show you around this monitor right now uh so i'm almost done this field you can choose right here you can actually look at your field see I load this is a this is a quarter 160 acres I ran out right there and I came with extra and I was watching like a hawk but apparently when I got down to about two or three hundred gallons BAM it just dumped itself out and I ran empty so then I had to go back for a little bit more to try to finish off so it's so frustrating you can never get the thing fixed so but anyway this is the only monitor that I know of that other than maybe the Borgo X30 where you can actually blow up everything and see it from an aerial view that's pretty awesome so then you can go back Maybe you want to customize all these things. You can you can do that too. Just hit your settings button right down here. Uh, hit your little pencil down here so you can edit. And then you can start moving stuff around. Like check this out. You can get move this over here, that over there. Maybe you don't want that at all. You just tap it, hit the little trash can, and it will just disappear altogether. Or maybe you're like, Mike, maybe there's some things on there that I want that you don't have. Well, that's okay. You just go down to the little plus button down here. You have, look at all these options. You just start scrolling over. So you find something, you know what Mike, I want to know what my liquid RPM is. So you just tap that then. You tap that, and I think it would add it. it did it add it somewhere? I don't want it. Actually, I don't even want this on here. Why is that even on here? So anyway, you can just add, and you can do this all while you're spraying on the go. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's an awesome option. So I really like this monitor, but I do not like this monitor. So these are 2016 models. Uh... 4440s. Now I'll take you outside and I'll show you what you can clean. Just so you know, I am last minute trying to do some spraying out here. It is October 27th and uh, it's very windy. There's wind warnings. I do believe it's a pretty consistent 75 kilometer wind gusting up to about 92 kilometers, I do believe. And you're like, holy crap, Mike. 
why are you spraying when it's rocking the sprayer back and forth? Well, it's kind of like combine in October. All of a sudden, 20% moisture is the new dry. So uh, when there's snow coming, you got to go, 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 and there's no other option. All right, guys? Now, I am running 480 rubber on this particular sprayer. Yes, I said 480, not 380. Do not get them confused. The reason why we went to a 480 is because we can squat the tire down, run less air pressure, and a much smoother ride. You're like, Mike, who gives a crap if you've got floaters for most of the year anyway? Just put the 380s on when you want to do some in-crop, like lentils, desiccation, or fungicide, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, well, that's all good and well for me, or you, I should say, but for me, we grow chickpeas, in which case we got to spray about every 10 days all summer long. So... After about the seventh or eighth time on down the same track on a 380, it just squishes right down and you have about a 12 inch rut there. So that doesn't typically work out too good. You guys still following me? Good, because I haven't taken a breath yet. I'm starting to really need one. Now, so we went with the 480. The downside with the 480 is when you actually do want to go into canola, you do leave a little bit bigger track, but the ride is a whole heck of a lot better. And of course, we got the skinny fenders for the skinny tire and the wide fenders for the 710 floaters that we typically use for burn off. So, now, whoo! We have had a lot of issues mechanically with the 4440s, guys. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. If I'm going to have issues with it, I'm going to let you know the issues that we're going to have. Obviously, I've already talked about the monitor. If I was to go into the SCR faults, I couldn't list them all. I couldn't list them all if you gave me a week. I've had so many SCR faults and codes going off. I can't. It's just mind-boggling. We've also gone through four DEF tanks. I think at one time we had six of these sprayers and four of them had ruptured DEF tanks, okay? And they're only like half full. I don't even understand what happened. But every piece of red equipment on our farm that year, case tractors, sprayers and everything, all had the, the ruptured pumps in their DEF. Like, they all had SCR vaults, had to come down here, dump the DEF tank or replace the DEF tank, and then, you know, you know how it is. No, they're not deleted. <sighs> Whew, I just, need a, I just need a little bit of a breath here. Now, talking about mechanical issues, we've had wheel motors go, we've had hydro go, we even had a hydro go this year, not on this particular unit, but on one this year. We've had multiple engines go and multiple hydros go, I should, I should state. We've had uh, fuel rail uh, lines go, and uh, we've had fuses go on the sprayer. You're, you're driving down the field, or maybe you're driving down the road, and a, this little fuse will blow under here. I can't remember, fuse 13 or 19 or something. It will throw itself in the park. Your, your, your ladder will go down. It will skid itself together in park. When you're going down the field at 17 mile an hour, all of a sudden your boom is over here. Yeah, it's kind of hard on things, you guys. So, yes, I'm being honest. We've had quite a few issues with them. Now, our dealer has been awesome. I could be out spraying at about 9 o'clock at night and someone gives an issue. I give a send off a text message or an email and they're down here first thing that morning or maybe it's at supper time they come yet that night. Awesome service. Just the sprayer itself has given me some issues. I'm just being honest with you. Now, I'm going to take, I'm going to run outside. I'm going to show you this little button that you can take out to make sure there's no plastic in it. Keep it clean because it will give you some issues. And these are not high, high hour sprayers, you guys. This is about, about just a little under 1,000 hours, and the year's about over. We had a hydro go in the one at this year, I think, what was it, 700 hours? Like, this is not high hour equipment, and we don't, we're not hard on them. We're doing like 17 miles an hour. Okay. It's a little windy. So, we, on this particular unit, it's a little dirty, we haven't washed it yet. It's not the end of the season, although it's just about there, and then we'll give them a good wash down. So, we got the chem inductor on there. Oh, blew my hat off. Oh, hey, hey! <laughs> Sorry, I almost lost it there for a second. All right, all right, you always gotta replace that sight tube like once a year, because you can't see anything from the fungicides and everything that you punch through it. We got front load, all oh, these sprayers got front load. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, yeah, there's really nothing to show you on a sprayer, guys. Really not much. Okay, I'm gonna run out here. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, we got the five away. I run duels sometimes. So, just unplug it. Typically, I wear gloves. But for you guys, I won't. Now, you, can, whew, you might get a little, uh, little sprayed here. Crap, it's gonna turn too. Okay. Okay, it's not supposed to. That is supposed to not turn. Normally you put your hand here. Hold on guys, I gotta pause this thing for a second. Okay, here we go again. So you just give this rotage, turn this off. It's gonna be under pressure, just so you know, and there's gonna be a little thing. Can't think of the technical word. It's gonna go blowing off, probably gonna fall in the dirt. Ah! Woo! <laughs> 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 okay, there we go, we got it. That's, that's natural. See this pin? 
I'm gonna set this down, dig this thing out of there. It looks clean. So this spring that you see in there, they'll sometimes get little pieces of plastic. And that spring, it has to pulse like this. Well, if it fills up with plastic, it's not gonna pulse. It's gonna go like my sound effects. Also look inside. There can be little hunks of plastic inside those holes. So it's clean. It's good to go. It was clean until I dumped it into the dirt. Okay. Very difficult to do this with one hand. Drop that back in there. See? You, you want it to go like that, you guys. Chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, chuck it. Thread this puppy back in. Stop derping, Mike. Stop derping. Come on. It's my left hand, you guys, okay? Stop laughing at me here. It's my freaking left hand. I have no skills with my left hand. If This is going to be embarrassing. Do I have to pause this? I did it! There we go. I'm going to treat myself to a little bit of a milkshake for that one. All right. Plug it back in. There. Always, always good to wipe your hands on your pants. That way you know the chemical is cleanly off your hands. Good to go. You can eat a hot dog. Now, I think that's it. I think that's it, guys. <coughs> Hold on. There we go. Got the LED lights. Pretty cool. I like the LED lights. They work good. Still waiting for John Deere to do that. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I think on their new ones they have that. Okay. Let's go for a little run here. Park break. Got one pass. I already did all this video already. It was 12 minutes long. Then I realized that I ran out of memory. And you're like, Mike, why are you going with so many uh, plugged, uh, not nozzles, uh, hand solenoids or failed solenoids? I'm like, well, I ran out of them. They're not plugged, they're failed. And I ran out of them. So, they're just stuck open. I've made sure they're stuck open, not closed. And here we go. At least these machines are very quiet with the engine in the back. And they're relatively smooth. That's about where you want the blue bar. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Mike, why are you running 70 pounds pressure? You know what? You raise an actually valid idea. Valid idea. Valid point. I can't speak English. It's not my native language. Let's go to 40. That's way better. Can't see very good, can you? Oh yeah, that's that's how I know if it's windy. The wind actually picks that up. So that's basically my wind gauge. If your deaf lid is open while going down the field on its own, it's windy. <laughs> oh, wind went down a little bit. Wind went down. Okay guys, that's it. That's it for me. Oh yeah, I've got the individual nozzle section control. Actually, I just have it in sections. I don't have it on. That's just one more thing to give trouble. So that's it. I'm done the field, but I still have a little bit of product because it screwed up on me. It says I have 200 gallons, and I can't see if it's got 200 gallons. But anyway, I gotta go. I'll let you guys go. Thanks for subscribing. It was fun to do a case video with you guys. I did kind of a part one there during uh, fungicide on the canola. But uh, the Amazons are in. I haven't done anything with them yet, but uh, I look forward to doing something with an Amazon with you guys. Um, I also have demoed the new R series sprayers. That is the R, right? Yeah, the R series. They are they are cool. They're fun. I haven't done a video, but uh, I guess I should sometime. So you guys are freaking awesome.
Until next time, have a good one.